the change a change has come over me he changed my life and now i'm free good morning and happy sunday we welcome us into february 14th not only as valentine's day but also as transfiguration sunday before we get into what we discussed in sunday school this morning we want to share a few announcements first uh just a reminder that we are still continuing wednesday evening meditation and if you are interested in participating, please contact the church so that we can get you signed up and connected. We also have been joining in with Belmont United Methodist Church for worship at 1030s, 1030 on Sundays after we have had our coffee hour at 9 and our Sunday school together at 9 30 so we hope that you join us for that as well we have some pastoral care notes that we would like to share uh, we would like to continue praying for gary um, the preparation and also the recovery and healing from his heart surgery and also for his family they've been awaiting this for some time and we are not looking so much to the resolution as to the healing. For Doris, who has been experiencing some ear problems, for Judy Matthews Taylor, for Judy Burton, and for Bobby, who are all in various experiences of recovery from different illnesses, we also want to pray for Nate's friend Abubakar and their family as they are surviving and experience their experiences of COVID at this time. Safe travels for Pastor Ingrid who had the joy of visiting her family this weekend and will need to travel home. For our new baby and Neely's family uh, with her family in Cote d'Ivoire. And for the folks at Trevecca, um, which currently has uh, a few dozen folks in quarantine for COVID-19 and just praying their faith and their wellness. Please take the time and lift up any prayers or concerns and joys that you have as we pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your love, your grace, your strength, your being, and your peace. We are prayerful to receive and practice the healing into which you are inviting us, not only to pursue it, but also to be mindful to do what we need to do to receive it and to live it, to be faithful with it. And where we may need to wait in various ways and strengthen in various ways to be patient and prayerful. That we're patient and prayerful with one another for what we may not be experiencing but are supporting one another through, which is a difficulty and a strain all its own. And we are so thankful, Lord, for the ways and places where you are not only offering healing, but that you are also bringing in new life. We are thankful for every child who is coming into the world at this time and blessing us with their very being simply because they have been created by you in their giftedness and to live this life well. We're prayerful not only to be faithful with you in the living of our own lives, but in also lifting up and supporting one another in both the difficulties and the joys of this moment. We thank you 
we praise you and it is in the name of your holy and precious son Jesus that we say together amen our study today was on mark chapter 9 verses 2 through 9 or what is referred to as the transfiguration and the transfiguration is essentially when at least the disciples who are present finally see and begin to understand Jesus revealed in his full form, not simply as human and not believing that Jesus is God or the son of God, but they literally get to see him in the literal light of God as both man and the son of God. And they're beginning to understand what that means, that he's not just anointed, but is truly the son of God. And so they're they're recognizing, they're witnessing and understanding that when they hear God say, this is my beloved son, listen to him. How deep and powerful Christ's teachings truly are. This is not someone that they should just be following around because this man has great wisdom, but because this man himself embodies the heart, the spirit, and the being of God. And we liken this to seeing Christ in his fullness with seeing a caterpillar. And you know, when we were kids and we found out that a caterpillar is also a butterfly, and we thought, oh, look at this little caterpillar, and it's so cute and sweet, and it lives life and it does what it does. And we might have even thought they were kind and fun and furry. And then we find out that the caterpillar is also a butterfly and it's all of these things all at once. We simply, we simply haven't had the opportunity to realize it yet. And so that's kind of how you want to think about the transfiguration. It's this realization of the fullness of the being of God come in Christ. And there's also the reality that in our liturgical year, we are not simply trying to understand who Christ was. I always say Christ has, Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. As people of faith, our purpose in reflecting in Christ is to understand because of who Christ was, what does that mean about who we are created to be and how we need to continue to become who we are created to be. So Christ is realized in this passage as a vessel of God. What does it mean for us to be further realized as vessels of God and to recognize vessels of God? So who and what do we need to better see as vessels of God? Who we may sometimes engage as simple a simple novelty or nice to have. So I shared with the group, I think we treat love as a novelty or nice to have when love is in fact a vessel of God. Love is the way in which God visits us and invites us into relationship and vibrant life with ourselves, with God, and with one another. So when we're talking about combating racism and various forms of oppression and even the ways that we need to show up together to help reduce the experiences of COVID-19 as acts of love. These shouldn't be nice to haves because Christ doesn't tell us to not be hateful to each other or to not do harm to each other. Christ tells us to love one another. So love is not a novelty. It is the vessel whereby Christ and God are charging us and inviting us to live up into our faithful being with them. Who or what else can you think of that is a vessel of God that we treat as a novelty or ignore? And as we move towards Lenten season, there's this particular question. So again, if the liturgical seasons are to help us reflect on our character and our being in God because of what we know and understand of Christ, how do we feel called to be transformed in our own lives and to become deeper vessels for God? As we close with that thought, I want to leave us with this 
challenge from Reverend Anna Gioze, in which she invites us to think about Lent and even transformation, not as giving up something we can live without, but to ask ourselves and then walk with the Holy Spirit in giving up what is keeping us from living. Blessings and have a wonderful week. And we look forward to this journey together in the next several weeks. Amen.